Hello everyone, this is Sherman here from TechOS. Um, today I'm going to be giving you my app review of the week. And this week I'm taking a look at PDF Squeezer for the Mac. Now this is an app that retails for $5.99 on the Mac App Store. And I will leave a link in the description of this video to where you can go ahead and download it. Now PDF Squeezer is an app which allows you to compress the size of PDFs. So this would be useful if you send a lot of PDFs, say, by email, and you want to be able to reduce the file size that you uh, are sending to ensure that it sends successfully, or maybe you just want to reduce the amount of, say, mobile data that you're using if you're sending a lot of stuff away from home or where you don't have a Wi-Fi connection. So I've got the app here in my dock, and I'm just going to launch it. It's very simple, so it will launch quickly, and it's just got a nice, simple interface to use. So I've got a PDF on my desktop. This is just a demonstration PDF. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it into the app where it says drop your files here. You'll see I get a little green plus. If I let go, as you can see, it's reduced this 0.32 megabyte PDF to 0.15. So that's about 52%, as it says here, size reduced by 52%. So now what I can do is I can just take this PDF, it will tell me obviously that I've got a file with the existing name so I can either override it or I can uh, hit cancel. I'm going to hit cancel for now while I go through the other options. Down here you've got sharing so if you want to send it as an email attachment or through another app directly from here you can do that. I can choose my quality so what resolution I want my final file to be. I can click here for a preview and that will just give you a you know, sort of a preview um, of the actual file and so you can take, get an idea of the actual quality. I can click save as to manually save it somewhere and choose a name for it if I want to have a different name to the original PDF or I can just hit save and that will override the original file. So that's basically the main interface, it's very simple as I said uh, but before I end the video I'm just going to go through and take you through some preferences. So I go if I go to the top where it says PDF squeezer and go down second option to preferences, you'll see I get this nice window over here which can give me a few options. So I've got the first option which is one click compression. So what this does is enables me to drag the PDF in and it will automatically override the old file and it will use the default filter. Now filter is basically the, the resolution setting so I think what I had it on earlier was 150 dpi. So 150 dpi will always be used as soon as you drag a file in and the file will automatically be overread and that's what this option will do. If you select this option over here, you can tick the box uh, which at the moment is greyed out. But if you tick this box, it will just quit the PDF squeezer after it's compressed a file. So this is useful if you just want to do one file at a time and then just have it quit automatically. With this second option down here, I've got calculate DPI of original file. So this will actually read the existing file that you're trying to compress and see what resolution it is. And by having the knowledge of what resolution it is, it can choose what resolution the final file needs to have. So that's just a nice time saver instead of you having to manually choose what you want. I can choose to play a sound after compression. So perhaps if you want to just get an audible feedback about whether something's compressed or not, if you prefer to have that. I can choose for allowing saving files for which the compression has failed. So if a compression fails, I can choose for the app to save sort of another version of it, even though that one's not compressed, so if you just want an extra version. I can include files from subfolders if I want to, so I do have that option if I've got multiple files. And I can automatically open the files in preview once they've saved. So this would be useful if you want to have the full editing functionality that preview offers as soon as it's compressed it. So without you having to manually open it later on, you can just have that. Post fix is just what I can choose for all my compressed files. So usually you'd have, say here, I have my file name demonstration. So what I'd normally have is just demonstration.pdf as the end file. Maybe I want to have, so that I can distinguish between the different files, so the original and the compressed file, I might want to have a different prefix. Here the default looks like it's been it's set to squeezed. So maybe if I wanted to change this to compressed, so comp just, I've written a shorthand version of that. Uh, but if you just wanted to have that at the end of every single file, so you know how to tell the difference between them, then you do have that option. I'll just uh, disable that for now. You can choose the, the size of your preview window, so if you only want a small window, then you can choose how you want that to be. You can choose your default filter, so which resolution the file will be compressed at automatically, so in the event where you don't manually choose your resolution. And you can choose to send usage reports, so obviously if the app crashes or something goes wrong, 
then it will automatically send a crash report back to the developers so they can sort the problem out. But that's basically it for this app. It's very simple and it's, it's a nice app to have on your Mac uh, just for general purpose. So if you ever need to compress PDFs, you can do it in a simple way that's nice and quick to do. As I said, I'll leave the link to where you can download it from the Mac App Store in the description of the video. If you've got any other questions on using it or it's not working or you've got any other general Apple tech questions, then you can get in contact with me using the details that are in the description of the video. Don't forget to like this video and also do leave a comment if you want to. And you can also subscribe. Subscribe by hitting the logo in the middle of the screen and do also consider checking the videos either side of the logo. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.